was Three Little Fish by Tag Alexi. Before that meet, we had Submarine Souls by The Nunnery. The Nunnery is playing at the Hook and Ladder on February 22nd. For that, Shuggy with the bottle, and he is playing Legendary Building on February 10th. Then we had The Riverman by Mary Bu, and Mary is playing at the Aster at February 10th. So there are plenty of things to do in the upcoming week. Um, and I'm excited now to have our special guest, Christy Costello. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank you for being here. I'm happy to be here. It's so beautiful today. It's, isn't it? Yeah. I know. I know. I, I, yeah. Just a positive note, you know, like walking out of my, like walking here on campus and it's all alive and the sun is shining. Sun is like, shining. This is February. Yeah. So mind blown. 40 degrees or something when I got yeah. here. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, you walked out in a t-shirt and. Yeah, we can this do that. Is, this is crazy talk. I think we're all celebrating your new album. That the the sun is celebrating along with you. Oh wow! Thanks, sun. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, I would because it's called from the dark, so it's. I know it's you know, perfect. Those duplicities. It's perfect, but I'll even step back a little bit more because maybe I'll have you talk a little bit about you, your illustrious history. I think I started listening to you a lot going to see live at Pink Mink. Yeah. Let's see, Butcher's Union, and then. Coma Club, is that still a... Coma Club is active. Active? Coma Club is like all the bands collectively that we're in together. So often we all we all write songs. Um, Orion being the songwriter for Extraterrestrials. Who, yeah. We just released the Terrestrial record in December. And then, of course, Monica LaPlante, who is... the uh, I play bass for her, and she's already released music, and that's the next project that we'll be recording. But um, all of us together sometimes come in and play each other, like get a good 20 minutes of each. Yeah. So we combine and we become Coma Club for some shows. What's nice is it's, because you see a lot of bands to, with part, with band members that interchange a little bit, but it, it feels really collegial. Yeah, I, I feel um, that chemistry sometimes you never know when you're going to stumble upon it. But that also, like, it started with me just filling in for some bass that Monica needed and it stuck and then next thing you know I'm hanging out at the ET's practices playing a trash can nice. and then it starts singing and having some fun and um, yeah and we just realized we all just really like each other and it's mature as well you know everybody in the band is got, they're pretty focused and driven and non-dramatical you know, so that's a definite plus. Yes, definitely. It's a, and you've it's been a couple of years, a few pre did pre COVID were you guys playing together? I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, I, yeah, it feels I, like I think I started gigging with Monica in 2019, so it was just before it all happened. When we'll, we took a little hiatus. Yeah, I was gonna say what a strange time to have a hiatus and yeah, I feel bad. I mean, I know there's a bunch of bands I know. Of course, music's always coming out. But right. We're putting out records that year, and you know, people were just starting out as well. And all of a sudden, you're just halt. <laughs> but it was only a year, but it felt like a, a long. I mean, we we all started playing shows again in 2021 where we could. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it, we took put the brakes on, but we got pretty active. Still, we made well weird things happen. That's the thing. I think it um, kind of the the mother of invention mm -hmm. there. That mm -hmm. opportunity, the time yeah. to do things, and the fact that not only did you have time, but the people you wanted to play with had time too. Yeah, you're not gigging every night. You're not the, many of us. Not, well, not doing the day job. Not doing the. And they're so they were they were like all just in the action as far as um, they they were all good at technology I guess you can say they all knew how to record themselves even our drummer has an entire record recorded on whatever medium he uses Pro Tools Logic but Monica had a million tracks where I had a million tracks and they instantly pushed me because they had we had to do like a live show for the current during the pandemic and basically I had to sink or swim <laughs> I basically had to use, learn how to use that stuff instantly and because of it, I was like, oh, I can finally actually record my own music entirely. So that's what's like made, made me do it. And I got a record done, so yeah. Well, and what, I, scary and freeing both at the same time, I have to yes. think. I mean, there were many beautiful mistakes. 
um, I look at it because it's a, it's a you, the mistakes you grow from, which are most of them, if, unless you keep doing them over and over <laughs> again. Hello, hangovers. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the mistakes that you that you happen on to that cr make you create better and end up with a beautiful outcome. Um, those are those are worth it, you know. And yeah. uh, yes, there were many times I was calling uh, Monica or my friend Dave in Chicago. And, I think I lost the whole thing. Oh my god, I think I lost the whole thing. What did, what did, what's this thing mean? What's that mean? And just pure duress, you know, it's like about panic. Work. Yeah, just because I might have lost the entire song I worked on for the last two days in the basement, as a, you know, as I was in the lab. But uh, it it all turned out in the end. But yeah. You know how confident are you with those skills now? I mean, not very still, but I, I mean, I ended up making. I was proud enough to start putting up my demos on Bandcamp, and they didn't sound so bad, and they worked for the purpose. I mean, you even got some airplay out of them, and they were demos, and that's kind of fun too because it's like that's still yet to be put into the studio and get polished. You say that, and that makes you realize you must know every facet of the music industry. I know a lot about it, but I'm still learning, and it's constantly evolving. But yeah, I've done so many different, you know, it's started off in bands that would tour and sleep on couches and floors, and did that for a good, well, you know, decade and a half. <laughs> I still do that, actually. But I mean, that's how you get to know yeah, your road dogness, all the stuff about rooms when you're playing, you harness your sound, you start to understand tone more. Touring is really how you tighten up your ship. Well, I think that's got to be, between that and now the production skills that you're building. Yes. That's a powerful one-two punch right there. Yeah, and that that's, thank you. Um, that was, this record really is my first hands down, like, I'm all in it. I'm controlling it. It is mine, of course, but yeah. I mean, production-wise, like sound-wise, drums, bass, everything about it, like it had to sound like it had a punch, has some teeth, grit, still soft when it needs to be soft, but just live, live as it can get. <laughs> I was at the Clown Lounge last night, and while well, the band upstairs was very loud, they were playing your, not not at my request even, yeah. playing your new album downstairs, and everyone's like, this is banging. Wow, thank you so I, much. Just all of the, and I, maybe it was me and mostly staff at this point, but it all, people who listen to a lot of music. Yeah. And it is, I mean, it's just one better than the next. Dang, that's a huge compliment. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I really, this was a tedious task, I can say that to my engineer, Zach, um, where, I mean, we even had a moment where we had mixed half the songs, and I said, no, we got to remix them. This isn't the drum sound I want. This isn't, you know, it needs to punch more. And, and it, I know that's tedious, especially when you get a whole mix down, but I, I was like, this record's gotta sound different. It's just gotta, I'm sort of, I'm a Virgo, so I'm a slight perfectionist and that, I guess we have that trait, but I just, coming out the gate, I mean, this is my very first solo project. I just want this record to stand out. Well, I, and I applaud that you, you took the courage to do that because I think it's sometimes it's hard for women, sometimes it's hard for people from the Midwest. Yes. To say, you know, that isn't right. Yeah, it's frustrating too because you're, you're you also don't want to be a, you don't want to offend anybody you're working right. with. Right. Um, but I just didn't. I, there was nuance that was missing, and I knew my songs at this point. Some of them are a little bit older. I mean, I pulled one from a, a, a shelved Ouija Radio record. There's two Ouija Radio, my first band. There's two records that never came out. Um, and then one song was the end remnants of what would, would have been the next Pink Mink record if we had kept going. Okay. And that song went into Butcher's Union play. And then Butcher's Union didn't really do anything. Um, and so when I was like, I'm going to do this, I'm taking these, some of these with me. And the, other, the rest of them are brand new, fresh batch, but I have so many songs in the vault. <laughs> you can only imagine. That, yeah, that I just needed to, like, I can bring some to life here and there, pull, pull from the past. Re, you know, vamp it up, and um, it's kind of funny. They still speak for today, and I, I, that's why I put them on the record because they felt like they belonged on this record. Yeah. Do you have a lot, song you'd like us to play now? Well, I would have rather you pick one if you uh, know them. I'm so torn. 
I do, I, yes, yes, yes. I, here's my, is that, I have a little technical difficulty that people can't see, but it's good, I'm working it out. Okay. But, um, in God we trust fund. I, okay. And then, because then I want to talk about it, because sure. I, I can't even say it out loud without hear, seeing that Dead Kennedys cover. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so right. funny. Let's that's play so it. Cool. I like it. <laughs> People will see us online, but the radio will play only this. Okay. Sometimes I have to reboot my computer to play a different playlist. And so that's what I had to do. So it was that. So I was listening. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that's all I, did. I was just, I wanted you to tell me first because I'm like, I'm, everybody's got their own. Like, no, this is so the cool. one. What's really crazy about this record, every single person has like, a different song they like. They tell me it's a There are a bunch of I mean I really had to choose because that one I mean uranium baby stop. I mean it, yeah, yeah. that's what I mean each one you're like, oh no I yeah. this is the one I like, this is the one I like, this is the one I like. But this is the one that I thought okay I won't ask you anything about it while we're Yeah yeah that's cool. <laughs> yeah it's funny. Oh like, why is it so quiet? It's quiet because I've turned this down well. I wrote this song in a minor key though that's so funny. It sounded totally different when I something's wrong. <laughs> We'll slide up one one step up the chromatic scale made it <laughs> made it very very major, which works. Yeah, it, it's yeah. I'll let, we'll let you speak about it. Later. Yeah, I will because it's <laughs> you don't want to duplicate the conversation. Remember when you said? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so how long is this studio been? It looks like, like since 1943. Oh, you know, the show has been, or the, the station has been here. I vaguely remember that it was in, um, over there when I was an undergraduate, but I don't know if I, like, there are a lot of things I think I remember that were totally wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's been here for a while. It's cool. Yeah. They have some newspaper articles in the hall that, like, when it first opened. Okay, so it's going to take that. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember it. My parents age. What's McAllister? You know, like some school in Oakland or what department? Blah blah blah. blah. What's, what's McAllister? Has I would say like international studies, political studies, that sort of thing. It's a good school. It's a really good school. Yeah. Um, and Kofi and on did go here. That was the head of the, um, or still my husband was going to school for his history, so. Yeah, it's not a, also, at least back in the late 80s, yeah. heavy part in school. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, he, he moved here, I think it was early 90s, so that, okay. that's where I met, I believe Eric, well, no, Eric Funk was from um, Chicago, too, but the other guys, some of the guys in the before. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a good, I, uh, I know I'm gonna wait to ask you one more. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, Paul Mold was a DJ here. Sonia Grover was a DJ really? here. Really? Yeah. That's it's funny to hear about the Bob Mold went to school here. Yep. Yep. I wonder what year he graduated, or if he did. Well, Mate went. Um, yeah. So, well. We're gonna go early 80s. Early 80s. That's my good guess. Thinking of shows that I went to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you get to see this movie that I imagine? I know there's all these tributes in town. I know, why isn't there always to be a tribute? That would be good. It would be good. I mean, I have nothing against the replacements, but I was a more of a girl. Yeah, absolutely. In God We Trust Fund by Christy Castello, yeah. who we have right here in the studio. Hi. Yeah, I like that. As I said, I cannot say it without seeing the, the cover of the Dead Kennedys and God We Trust. That's cool. And then you have that, I don't know the musical term, but you have the talky part. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like Jello Briafra talking during the middle of a Dead Kennedy I love song. It. I love it. I love that you get that from it. Yeah. Everybody, to each their own. I know. I thought, I'm just going to tell you what it reminds me of right away because that might, I. 
and I, I grew up listening to In God We Trust a lot and, and, and loved it, of course. Um, yeah, that song is, well, it, it, had, it featured, that part featured my uh, friend Terrell Woods, a.k.a. Carnage the Executioner. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, we've interviewed Carnage, yes. And uh, he, I, I, I played a black party with him in, in the Monica band, and just, I just stared at what his feet and his mouth were doing <laughs> <laughs> in awe. Of yes, him. yes. And I was like, I need to do a collaboration with him at some point. So yeah, I sort of started stalking him. Well, it, it was pretty easy that I book a club that he played at, but you know, <laughs> that's, a, um, that's a solid way to like, stalk. Remember me? I that's played friendly a friendly party with you. <laughs> Will you come record with me? We just we played a show together, and then uh, and we got along. And I, I just think he's a really great guy, and he's super talented. And I'm I'm glad he worked with me on that song. I I actually was like, would you be my Vincent Price? Like, you know, oh, very nice. Michael Jackson, a Thriller. But, uh, yeah, I told him the concept, and I was like, you know, it's the old story. Uh, Robert Johnson meets the devil at the crossroads. And do you want to live this in this realm here, your mortal realm, without any worries, all the riches? You don't have to think about anything anymore. <laughs> you just have to give me your soul for after. So, yeah, and he had this, uh, this song called The Soul Snatcher. Yeah. Which I, I was super inspired by why I went, that's like, he's got to be my soul snatcher. And he already does it, it on his record, so it just kind of plays that plays off that character. Yeah, and then, you know, my friend, when I played it for my friend in Chicago, he's like, that song reminds me of B-52s mixed with uh, Susie Sue. Is it? You bring to it what you bring to it. I know, I was like, that's cool. I've never heard that before, but I can see it, yeah. Hear yeah. it, I Yeah, guess. I could hear it, I could hear it, yeah. My, I have a friend who will be annoyed with me if I don't ask uh, which of the songs would have had a Pink Mink uh, origin on the new album. Campbell's Soup Kids it. was the... That okay. One. Did that, one, that one was kind of birthed in Pink Mink land, for sure. It might have been a little bit older than that. I was working on it for a while, but it, we, we started playing it. I think we even recorded it on the air at the, one of the Radio K's. Nice. Off the records. But... Um, yeah, I never got, I never made it to a record. So then Butcher's Union adopted it, which was, for all of you in Radio Land, Butcher's Union doesn't exist anywhere online except for occasional YouTubes. <laughs> but we played for six years, and we yeah. were a band, um, and it was just members of Dillinger 4, members of Gay Witch, Abortion, and um, things that fall apart out of Madison. So it was kind of a little all-star cast of, Local band, super musicians. Super fun to see. Yes. Because I think the last the, the last show, at Palmer's. That was, was at Palmer's. Yeah. yeah. Was that a hot dog show? Did we... I think it was. <laughs> I think it was. You were yeah. there. You probably got a hot dog. I might have got a hot dog. Yeah. Thrown yeah. at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It must be. I don't want to ask why, but it, it, it must be strange to say to leave some of these chapters behind or does it feel like college or like you know it does it's strange but because you're living when you're in a band you're like it's like a living breathing organism yeah. it's a family and and it's kind of all it's your, it's the one thing you're so focused on um but in yeah butcher's union was sad when it came to an end pink make it was sad when it came to an end. pink make like we played our last show was i think 2015 pizza okay. j block party and we I never really said goodbye you know, we just never played another show. <laughs> Same with Ouija Radio. We never said, hey, this is it. Just never played another show. So just, we leave, it's left open, I guess. But um, good. And then Butcher's Union, we kind of knew. Yeah. We just knew Sean was going to, like, pull back from music. I mean, just without Sean, it wasn't wasn't Butcher's Union. So, no. Yeah. There's still, like, maybe room for a show or two in the future. Maybe we'll see if something ever comes together. But... Um, I'm now in three bands, which are each their own band, and sometimes together, like Colin Club. And yeah. I, I guess maybe with all the bands I've been in, as long as I've been a musician, I I kind of don't fear anymore about that stuff, and especially now that I've come out as a solo artist. So I'm like, I can do this and keep doing this, and maybe have to do it with different people, depending on the tides. But yeah, it's I'm at that level where it's my independence now. It, and what what inspired you to say I'm gonna do it now? I'm gonna do solo now. Oh, well, starting to play with other people that like Monica, who yeah. 
just went out as an independent artist on their own was inspiring for me. And I was like, I can keep my song catalog on alive. Uh, I wasn't going to just come out as a solo artist and play all Pink Mink songs or all Ouija radio songs. No. But I, I, but I wouldn't mind like once in a while pulling a song out of, uh, you know, out of the closet and being like, oh, let's play this one. You know, I wrote it. I'll bring it to life again. Um, just having that option. And then moving forward, not being stuck in like, oh, well, um, I can't play most of the songs I wrote on that because that band is gone. Or, you know. Yeah. Just going forward, I can I can keep my song repertoire alive. As an audience, as a music lover, it's 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 nice to hear that. I mean, I you know, you're I'm not the person who says just play your hits or you know just yeah. oh, don't play anything after 1989. Okay, maybe there are some bands I say that too, yeah, but yeah. you know, it, but I I like to hear the modern stuff to you know yeah. the, the contemporary stuff and kind of the changes through time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, instantly, I got a message from somebody who was like, "Are you ever gonna play? If you could ever play, like, Pink Mink's Hidden Beach or something?" You know, like, yeah, I get it. Like those, there are songs that are really just they 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 ring to people, and people want you know, want, want, want mind to hear them again. Possibly, yeah. That there is an opportunity for that, and that's kind of cool. Absolutely. And then, but the, it is nice to know that like I'm like, oh, I can finally freely just keep making music and there's a stage for me and there's a place for all this with kind of the worry about the band breaking up and you know all that what all that comes with it well it's funny as you say that because i think you know part of it is that you have songs that are the soundtrack of pe very important parts of people's times you know like that reminds me of this person or that reminds me of this yeah. night and that night you know certainly for me i can re remember Team Picnic at, uh, must have been Art of World. I mean, I, it's yeah. many times, but it's the Art of World show that I remember the most. And I think it, now that I think about it, I think it was like terrible weather or so, you know, but it was a very, very fun was show. It, was it one, one of the ones in the Grumpy's backyard or was it out in, in the street somewhere else? I'm trying to remember. I remember a parking lot, you know, like yeah, flashes yeah. of, yeah. but it's, you know, so that, and it's, in, well, I'm I'm super happy to hear, as I said, any of the new stuff and what's coming new stuff. Yeah. You 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 want to hear the old way because you want to be back in that minute. Yeah. You know. Right. One, I wouldn't mind being 28 again. Not that I was 28 <laughs> when I saw y'all play, but <laughs> you know. Well, neither was I. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> we might be at 38 or yeah. So we'll go on. Would you like to play another song? Sure. Uh, you want me to pick this one? Uh, I'm happy either way. Uh, let's see what song. Um... How about title track, From the Dark? Okay. From the Dark, Christy Costello. So I'm like, yes, I have it quieter in here. It's surprisingly. Right. Did I answer all your questions for what we got in the dress? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, it's just always a yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do really like. Yeah. Yeah. This one's the oldest. But I'll leave it for the conversation. That's hard. I just want to talk about what's going on. I know it is, but I. It's a good time for me to see if I check my phone. My kid, I leave my kid. She's old enough to know. Did you get a lot of messages, though? Um, uh, yes, she, I'm sorry, I just got, I just got one right now. Oh, no, take, go I'm, ahead. I have three kids. Go ahead. I, there's no, um, yeah, she's, I, I'm going to, she's supposed to be doing her homework. She's got to, like, I, I leave her like two hours. I'm like, you get this done now. I'm going to send her a message. Like, how's the homework going? <laughs> See if she's... <laughs> I am past having to care if anyone's doing their homework. <laughs> How old are do you have? Okay, I figured. Uh, yeah, they're 19 to 25, and we got three daughters. Okay, so they get, if they're in college, they got to do that on their own. Yeah, two are, I've got one who lives in Ireland, I've got one who lives in Portland, and the youngest lives with me. Okay. So they're, I won't say they're grown up. They're yeah, yeah. Super close. Ireland, huh? Yep. 
What did they do? What did they do out there? They, she had an artist residency uh, when she was little. Her dad's from Ireland. When she was younger, we lived there for a number of years. So that's awesome. Did you get answered in homework? No, she didn't. Sorry. Somebody just wrote, are you doing an interview? They're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like doing an interview now. I wonder if they went off like a minute or something. Does this like roll in between? Yeah, so I say, I'm not. Which I'm just like, she, she, she'll be on her phone doing whatever that game is, Roblox or whatever. <laughs> How old is your, uh, she's 10. 10. She'll be 11 in May. So nice. We're about that age. We're all the hormones. All ahead of you. Yay. Yeah. It's really fun. <laughs> I three teenage daughters at once. Wow. I'm living the dream, man. I bet. They're in a way, I wonder if, that takes, if they take care of each other. That's true. On a good day, yeah. and on a bad day, <laughs> they're on. I have a sister who's about my age, and so I can remember. Best of times, worst of times. From the Dark by Christy Costello. Yeah. We have in studio. That one's fun. Yeah, tell us about that song. It's my favorite, one of my favorite to play live. And I was really like, how am I going to make this come across like the live performance? It's a, it's a tough one in the studio. Definitely beat my brain on that one a lot. But it came out pretty good. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. How did you do it? Um, Just on that tip to. Just, there was a lot that, again, a lot of uh, working with tones, especially drum tones. That's that's really where you set the bar if you're recording. Everybody, everybody kind of knows that. <laughs> but um, from there, I just still wanted to make sure that like it packed that punch like it does when it's live. Because once you just, I don't know. I guess it's got that '90s formula. Absolutely. Where it's just quiet and then boom. I don't. A, a great record for it to exemplify would be uh, P. J. Harvey's "Rid of Me." Yeah. Uh, that that record is so '90s, but. And I'm, I'm and I'm not sure if it's been remastered or not yet, but it would be just like super quiet and then like bang in your face. And, but to get those levels right and and making a song, it's tricky. But it turned out so. Um, I would have to give Zach a lot of the, uh, praise for that one. It's just like we we went back and forth so much on like mm, try this, try that. No, that's it, that's it. But you don't want it to also like. Sounds super compressed and flat, you know, between the one variable and the other. Yeah. So um, there's a magic there for sure. I'm glad that you know it. Yeah. <laughs> I've also, that's another one too that came from the last Ouija radio record that never came out. Uh, that would be recorded in maybe 2009. Okay. And again, I got in the Detroit garage rock band, the Bomb Bondies, in 2008. Mm -hmm. And kind of put my own stuff on the shelf and then it just stayed there so um, it was fun to kind of pull one of those songs from it I I love the idea of it I mean it really is kind of been a, a retrospective although I wouldn't necessarily be able to say well this song is older than that song but yeah yeah so that that, that that's gonna be the uh, song I wrote the longest ago that's on the record and it means a lot to me for this record too because um, there's the, the the theme overall is that like of course the when th like light and dark uh, things come from the dark the dark can be a very terrible place but at the same time it's also a, a place where a lot of things are born and there's a beauty in that so the dark can be kind of a beautiful place scary beautiful and alone isolated all that those feelings we get from 
when we feel like we're in our lowest places. So like this to me was crawling out of a tunnel, a scary dark place that you got stuck in. And um, I'd also like, there's new, there's references to like kind of things that get you out of your own mindset. And I'm not gonna be, um, I, I, I am an advocate of a little bit of psychedelia in life, um, taking yourself somewhere. And, and I guess, um, in more ways than one, I guess I'm saying like a stay at home vacation. Yeah. In a weird way, where you find ways to explore your own mind. Okay. And I feel that um, that's one way to trick, your, trick yourself right. out of a funk. And I've used it many times. So I wrote the song when I, I had a friend who just could not get out of the funk. You know, the, the depression that can yeah, I am, lead to very I am places. familiar, yes. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of like, just like I said, like flipping the side. Yeah. I know this may seem really hard right now, but there's always another side. And again, the whole album has that cycle to it. You know, like we gotta go through the dark places to feel the light places, it's all a balance. It's that never ending cycle. The snake that eats its own tail, you know, like the whole- <laughs> Or a horse, is that Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, I, I did another interview not too long ago where we talked about it's a lot of, there's a lot of duplicity in this record. It's also like, again, yeah, for all this stuff that's super heavy and dark and like really hard, it's, there's a lot of fun and yeah. campiness and like things to laugh at too. And whatever you feel like my, 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 my favorite, one of my favorite things to do is dance, it just releases so much. And uh, it's like finding your own, find your dance. Yeah. You know? So that's really what it's about. Well, and I think it's helpful to have that sugar that helps the medicine go down. Yeah, you know, it's really great, especially when you're in the dark. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. anything you can. And I like the idea of a vacation in your mind. I tend to, I tend to just go on. I mean, travel. Yeah. Travel has always been for me. Yeah, and like sometimes you can't, and that's where. Yeah. And sometimes we're stuck, and um, there's there's just ways. I mean, I just know there's ways that different ways to treat that kind of depression too. And however you choose, but like if you can find positive ways out of it, meditation is great. Just some tools, you know. So for me, I I, I had some helpers, you know, and I, I I choose to try to veer away from a lot of Western medicine unless you absolutely need it. I know right. Well, right, right. Um, put some on us, but uh, obviously there's a lot a lot of reasons to that medicines are great, and you need them. I mean. ADHD or stuff like that for sure. Absolutely. But uh, I'm just saying like there's, it's it's really hard for some people and there are other options, you know. Well, and I don't know so much about the psychedelia, but uh, acupuncture. Acupuncture is great. It's too. the best. I love acupuncture. It, I agree with that. Absolutely. So I, I think if there's a nice blend of, wow, well, and I would do some of the alternative first often. And as yeah. you said, unless there are some things that you just really, you know. And then acupuncture is also really meditative too. Just sitting with yourself in peace yeah. is, is wonderful because it opens the windows, you know, of the mind and you get to sit on stuff for a little bit and really think it out. Well, it's because you are a yoga instructor as well. Mm -hmm. That yeah. has got to be interesting. Work. I, my, my meditation is walking or dancing and I walk five to ten miles a day. I'm yeah. a serious, you know, I can, on vacation I think I, what was, yeah, I can walk 10, 15 miles a day on vacation, you know, if I get, if I have the time. It's great. It's a, David Sedaris says, that. may yeah. seem ridiculous, but that's the best 12 hours of my day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I but love I, walking too. I walk daily as well. Yeah, well, so, but so I'm always curious about kind of the yoga and that being able to sit with things and mm -hmm. to... Well, and there's a thing, um, a practice called Vipassana, uh, Anapana Vipassana, I believe. Uh, that Sanskrit stuff, it gets really, I, I don't know, my brain discombobulates things, but it's the practice of sitting in silence for longer periods of time. And you can start with five minutes. 10. It's not meditation where somebody's telling you about a pretty cloud and let's take another breath and relax. It's just you sitting in absolute stillness with your own thoughts. And your own thoughts are your own monsters and they just keep coming at you and they'll make you twitch. Your body starts to ache. But you practice it and you practice it. And next thing you know, all of a sudden you get more lucid. Mm. You get more free in your brain. It's a surgery of the brain. But um, yeah, I got up to sitting for like two hours in stillness oh. at a time when I was going to yoga training and it would just fly the first 10 minutes are unsettling because it's like 
and you go running or something, you yeah. have to get over that hump. It's sort of the same way. You're, and, but those thoughts, sometimes those repetitive thoughts and things that bother you in the mouth just keep coming at you, keep coming at you. And then you breathe, you focus on your breath, and then they go back to where they came from. And then I feel like over time you work those thoughts out and then they clear up spaces of the brain. I have friends that go and do that. There's a place in the nominee where you can sit for 10 days. Wow. Yeah, with monks and you sit for 10 days and it's a self journey. And you sit in silence every day. They get you up to eat and go to the bathroom and then you just go back to meditating until you go to sleep. But apparently it's done wonders for so many people. Wow. And I can see why. Just sitting with my own thoughts for 20 minutes is really a energizing, but it gives me a, like, a clear vision of what I need to get done. I'm an advocate of doing things that scare you. Yeah. I mean, not, you know, not jumping off a building, but right. doing a solo album. You know, or I don't, yeah. but you know, that, that sort of thing. But I think that would scare me too much. I'd have to start with like 30 seconds of... Right. Well, well, that's thirty seconds that you you try it, you know, and it is really dark. I'd like to sit with your own thoughts, and especially because the ones that the things that bother you the most are going to keep coming at you, and that's like that's the stuff that you know that you need to work out the hardest. And I mean, work out. It's not working on. It's like you 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 work it out. I guess it's helped me so much, um, yes. and I, I think that's really wow. I get people ask me how I can do so much because mm -hmm. I look venues. I'm a mom. I play in three bands. And I'm like, yeah. where does your energy come from? And I think it's because I have a, a solid meditation practice in my life. All right. I will take it under consideration. <laughs> it is one of those things never where I think late. I should. Never I should. I think if I could find a way to do it and walk that I would. That Walking is meditative. Yeah. Well, I will say that is my I meditation. I, I, I mean, I can. a lot of meditating in when I'm walking. I, yeah. <laughs> I did a 12 hour walk one time and it, honestly, I mean, it some people ran for 12 hours, and I thought, well, that's crazy town, and they're on the ground in pain after about eight hours, and oh, yeah. at the end of the 12 hours, one of the organizers was like, you look just the same as you did the first mile. I'm like, well, it's just one foot in front of the other. It's not right. that I'm in my head, yeah. nobody's bugging me, yeah. no expectations of me doing laundry or finishing an assignment. You know? It's so freeing. I, I walk every day, too, and I know that feeling. I feel like I got my first major thing done is to get my walk in walk my dog for about, I mean, I'm, I don't have as much time but right. in the morning, but I do three three to five miles. Nice. Myself. That's very good. Yeah. But it's really important. I just feel like I can take on anything after that. Yeah, it is. It. I I find myself breathing more easily. It's about, yeah. For me, I, mean, I just did a nice friend of mine yesterday about eight miles and about three miles into it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, breathing is so much easier. Yep. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to. It's just so... It's something about being outside too. Oh, fresh air. Especially when it's forty degrees in Minnesota in mm -hmm. February. Well, I'll take. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll it's take a needle. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we won't. Yes. Would you like to play another song? I think you should pick the next one. Um, I think I'm gonna pick one that you mentioned earlier, and I think it's the first one. Yeah. Okay. Campbell Soup Kids, by Christy Costello. Long intro. I'm with the quiet starts. That's, that's what gives me my gray hair. It's the opening of the album. It's gonna take. Oh, off. Off. It's gonna take off. That's why I like that. I love. I. It's gonna get loud right here. There's actually a jet sound. The opening too. All right. Now I'm gonna. I'll ask you about the show and everything. But look, the song is neutral. Because I'm looking at the clock and somebody comes in at two, so I get it. That's really cool. Yeah. Do you want to do one more song before the end of it? Sure. Okay. Um, the way the second one first, and the pass is pretty fun. It's only like two yeah, minutes. Yeah, right? <laughs> Sometimes I like to make it. I'm nearsighted, so which is why I have right. to. You'll see me in the bar, and I, but if I want to see someone across the way, it's kind yeah. of home way. Yeah. But now I'm getting practical. I'm going to go grab a little bit more coffee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I 
get better at interviewing on these days. I've done so many this year. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm getting better. <laughs> Those. I like to hear about it, things. It's This song's fun. They're all fun. That's how I am when I listen to it. I'm like, oh, this is, oh, maybe this is my favorite. Oh, maybe. A time and a place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is like, I'm really inspired by some of the 90s bands that had like, you know, punk rock, post punk, they have the horns, they had that one horn. Like, the cows have a horn right now. Yeah. Nation of the Maybe I should say that one too. This song is really good. Like, sort of inspired by that stuff. Aren't we? Yeah. Remember when we talked about it three seconds ago? That That's, was... Let's talk about that, yeah. I was a huge punk fan, but I was a huge ska fan as well, so oh, I cool. always had the mix. The Meanies. The band for back then. The ska band, I was thinking. Yeah. Remember that, you know, Madness, Specials, Colleen. It's a little slow in the draw there. Well, it comes on. It comes minutes. on you fast. I know. I was enjoying the music too much. Yes. <laughs> Christy Costello, tell us a little bit about that song. Uh, opening track. Off my new record, From the Dark, Campbell Soup Kids. Um, really came together when I was in Pink Mink. We played it in Butcher's Union, and it just needed to find its way to you all. So I put it right there. It's a great way to kick it off. Yeah. Um, it's basically, I wrote it, that song right around the time that we were in our first year of all having smartphones. And <laughs> I remember my intro and personal communications classes we were talking about in the 90s how we were just losing the sense of community because we had these things like drive through pharmacies now, drive through <laughs> food. We no longer went to the local mom and pop store to pick up things anymore and see our neighbors yeah. and how we're communicating less. Now we have smartphones and we don't even write sentences anymore. We don't talk to each other with our voices anymore. Um, and is it good for us? As Are we te technically evolving this much or are we taken away from our artistry and our nuance? basically is what it was all wrapped up in one little package called Campbell Soup Kids and also it's musically very um, influenced by the things that I really liked about post-punk in the 1990s. Bands like The Cows that had horns. Yeah. Bands like Yank Nation of Ulysses. Just really powerful bands good messages and well I don't know about The Cows. I do know they, <laughs> they had some mixed messages. <laughs> I have heard in silence right now. <laughs> Love the cows. They were I my do favorite, one of my favorite. I do, I do. Yeah. But message wise, yeah. I'm gonna say, mm, take that to your own, whatever yes. you interpret that as. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Nation of Ulysses is a little bit more, uh, more on the political side of stuff. It's such a fun band. Like one of my favorite bands from then. But I, that's the, that's my whole thing too. It's also taking some of the aspects of late '70s punk too into this record. And putting a horn on it, my friend Matt Paul playing the saxophone, he's so good. And, but I didn't want it to be like this. There's, there's that like some people are like, is the saxophone going to work in this? Is yeah. It, you know, there, it, is it gonna, you know, there's different types of how you want to play the sax. And I was like, well, I kind of just want to be like the Stooges with the sax player and stuff, and make that work somehow, like rock and roll. Yeah. And I feel like I got uh, the bands I used to see with that kind of horn um, back in the day did that pretty well too, they captured that energy, so. Oh, I think you absolutely do. I think that, Thank yeah, you. and I think it's kind of fun to do that. I am, I'm looking at the old clock at the wall, so I want to make sure that we talk about the release. The release, yes. uh, February 17th? We, uh, so for February 17th, 7th Street Entry, um, gonna be playing with, opening up as Citric Dummies. They are one of my favorite local hardcore bands. Their songs are so great. Yeah. It's just the the tones again are my favorite kind, and also it's it's got an element of you know yeah, I can't drop f bombs, <laughs> but you know like lighten up, um, have some fun, <laughs> in your face, uh, don't take yourself too seriously. I love that stuff. Yeah, that's, yeah, they're very fun. Then it's scrunchies and scrunchies are great, uh, and every just 
the music I love so much. It's it's not quite power pop. It's not. It's post punk. It's yeah. It, it's melodious. It's got that sassy girl energy to it. The stuff I love, girl group stuff. I love everything girl group from the '60s to now. Yeah. And more pop, more 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 and more and more. And then uh, my friends from Madison are coming, screaming since and in the ponds, which is ponds is short for tampons. So again, don't take yourself too seriously. They're the best. They're one of the funnest bands I've ever seen live. They were a party band. Yes, it's a Madison. Madison. <laughs> it's Madison. Like McAllister. <laughs> uh, you know, you know the drill, kids. This is this is the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, but also. They're great live. They're 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 great music. They write great songs. It's, they're going to capture the audience. They make the audience go there with them. So I cannot wait to see them. They, they're also kind of reuniting. The singer lives in New York, so they get together oh, every couple of years yeah. to play a, a show here and there, mostly in Madison. But I got them to come here. Oh, good for you. Yeah. So then we play last, and we've got some things up our sleeve for the show. So I'm really excited, you know, to um, do all that. For everybody that comes, yeah, um, do come. Seventh Street Entry, uh, February seventeenth, Saturday, February seventeenth. We're having a listening party too for the record at Dusty's next Friday night, oh, nine thirty nice. p.m. And then we'll do a dance party afterwards with my oh. DJ crew, Lady Heat. Very fun. Yes, oh, that sounds fantastic. It will be. Yeah, yeah, definitely something folks should go do. Yeah. All right, so we have one more song to play us out here. Um, this is Paul's. It's a psychedelic furs cover. I feel like getting that late 70s vibe. Um, here it is. Paul's Psychedelic Furs Cover. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're That's welcome. gonna, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> 